everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, today I want to show you how to make the sweetest refillable notepad. Y'all, welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back. To all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers, thank you all so much for choosing to be here today. Today's video is another take on an 8x5 notebook. This one will be refillable, and you're going to have a nice little accordion folder on the inside so that you can store those important little papers or receipts. I'm going to give you a closer look at this in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here's a closer look at the notebook we're going to be making. I haven't decorated the outside because I don't really know if I want to. I might put some word stickers on here, but I really do like this beautiful daisy paper. So I might not do anything to the outside, but when you open it on the inside, we have this nice accordion style folder. Now my magnet is being held in place by tape. Once it dries, I'll be able to remove that tape and the magnet will be safe, but I didn't want to run the risk of it coming up. And so you have a nice place to store those receipts or important little papers or tickets that you need to hold on to. And then on this side, we have a standard eight by five notepad. And this notepad is refillable because we've created our own little pocket for it. So this will sit in the pocket and you can see that pocket holder right there. So you're able to use this as many times as you want because it is refillable. Now when finished, our little notebook measures five and one eighth by eight and one eighth, and it is half an inch thick. Y'all, it's going to be so easy. Here's what you're going to need to make it. So I have my notepads and I'll just be using one from this pack of three and I get these at the Dollar Tree. For me, this is a chipboard project and I will be using the medium weight chipboard I always use. Please make sure that you're checking the description box for my Amazon storefront. Some of the products, including the chipboard that I use, can be found there. So we have two pieces that measure five and one eighth by eight and one eighth. And we have one piece that measures half an inch by eight and one eighth. Then I have a piece that measures five and three eighths by 11 and three quarters. We have a piece that measures 11 by seven and seven eighths. And I have two 12 by 12 inch pieces. We'll probably do some tweaking to these pieces, but this is what we're going to start out with. So we're going to start out with this beautiful paper being my cover. And this is from a Michaels paper pad. I can't remember the name of it, but I know that it is from Michaels. All of the papers that I'm using are from that same paper pad. And I did get it at Michaels. And y'all, I think I bought it at Michael's either last year or the year before. So I am just going to go ahead and peel away all of the tape backers. So we'll be placing our chipboard down like this. Now we will have a very snug fit, so we won't have that much space on either side, but we will have enough so that we can fold over. And that's the important thing, you want to be able to fold over. So I'm going to take this piece, place it down, Take this piece, place it down with about an eighth of an inch in spacing, and we will place this down with about an eighth of an inch in spacing. I'm going to flip this over and go ahead and get that nice and stuck. And then I am just going to trim away the excess here. Then I'm going to take my stylus, press it against the chipboard, and drive it into the paper. What this does is if your paper is prone to cracking, this might help to minimize that cracking by pre-scoring and loosening the fibers. It won't necessarily stop a paper that wants to crack from cracking, but it might help to minimize the severity of it. So I am just going all the way around. I even go on the inside. So now I'm just going to stand this up 
and train that paper to fold over. Now I'm going to take my finger blade and we're just going to miter those ends. If you have the five in one tool, you can definitely use that if you're uncertain about how close to cut on your miter. I will have the five in one tool video linked in the description box below for those of you who might be interested in knowing what it is. So now I'm just going to take my tape Place my tape around the edges here because we will need to fold over our piece. Let's just go ahead and get that nice and stuck. Then I'll peel away the tape backers. We're going to take the smaller side and fold it over, getting that nice and stuck in our tape. We'll do the same thing over here. Let's just fold over. And now I am going to take just a little bit of glue because my edges here are a lot wider on the long side than they are on the shorter side. So I'm just adding some glue to make sure that I have good paper stick. do the same thing here. Just adding that glue. Go ahead and fold that over. And so now I'm just going to stand this up. We're going to go along the edges, getting everything nice and squared and professional looking. So now that we have this part done, we need to bring in our inside liner and my inside liner piece measures 11 by 7 and 7 eighths and we're going to place it down like this. But before we do, we need to go ahead and add some tape to cover the chipboard. And then we'll just place a strip here and a strip here. Then I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to place tape along the edges of the inside liner piece. Then we'll peel away the tape backers from the liner as well as the jacket. And y'all will join these two cuties together. All right, so I'll peel away the tape backers from both. And now we're going to take this piece and we're going to place it down like this. I'll use my big old spatula to go in and get this nice and stuck. Make sure you pay attention to the edges because you don't want your paper pulling away. Then I'll go in and I am just going to work my spine. I like to make sure that my spines are very crisp. So I go in and I take the end of my big old spatula and I just really go in from both sides and I work that spine. So now I'll turn it around this way, pull my big old spatula in this direction and find the other spine. And then I'll work it just like I did on the first side of it. And when you're done, you're going to have a beautifully defined spine like this where you can see the definition of the spine is very clear and very crisp. Then when you look at the book overhead, you're not going to see any paper puckering at all because we went in and we really worked that area. 
So this is good to go. So we have our inside. So now we're going to go ahead and make the pocket. I'll be using a full sheet of 12 by 12. And on one 12 inch side, I am going to score at half an inch at five and at nine and five eighths. Then I'll take it and turn it once like that. And we're going to score at half an inch, one, one and a half, and two. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. We're going to rotate it to the opposite side. So there are my four scores, half an inch, one, one and a half, and two. Then on this side, we'll do the same thing. So half an inch, one, one and a half, and two. And so now we can fold and burnish all of our scores. And with these side folds here, I am just doing my accordion fold on those half inch scores that I made. So we're folding like this. So fold all the way in, then go in and fold that one back. Fold over and fold back. So now what we're going to do, this end is the end that we're going to fold up. So we're going to go to the score mark all the way in like that. Basically what we're doing is we're going to free this tab and we'll do the same thing here at the top because we want it to free that accordion. So then here at the bottom, I'm just going to cut down and remove the first three half inch marks. So, so far it looks like this. Here at the top, I'm just going to remove this all together. So this is what your piece looks like so far. So then you're going to have a small corner piece here and we are going to remove it. So what we did over here, we're going to do over here. So I am going to go in, cut straight across, and remove this side so that it matches this side. Then we'll do the same thing here. I'll go in and we'll free this, and then we'll remove these three pieces and then we'll remove this corner piece here. And so now your piece is going to look like this. I am going to take my glue, place my glue here. This is just giving us a nice edge. If you wanted to, you could remove that whole section altogether. I just left that one half strip so that I would have something to basically fold in. And then I'm going to take this little flap here and we're going to fold it over. That's just giving us a nice crisp top to this. So I'm going to take my glue, place my glue, and fold over. And then I'm going to take a magnet. I'll place a little bit of glue right there and we'll take that magnet and we'll put it in the glue. So your piece looks like this. This is how it looks on the front. We're simply going to take these pieces and fold them in just like this. And then we just bring this up and over. And if you find that when you're bringing it up and over, you don't like the snugness here at the bottom, just go in and angle a little bit to remove some of that bulk. And the same is true for here at the top. If you don't like the bulk, just go in and angle just a little bit. So now I'm just going to take my glue, place my glue here, 
and my glue here. Take this piece, place it down. Take this side, place it down, and then just start folding over like that. And then we'll get that nice and stuck. And y'all, that is how easy it is to make your own little accordion holder. You can put as many half inch strips on the side as you want. I just added four. So now I'm going to take my scissors because I just want to round my ends a little bit. If you have a corner rounder, guys, you can certainly use that for this part. So now I can take my second magnet, put the magnet down, add some glue to the magnet, and then we'll just fold over that top. And what we're doing is getting that glue impression right there. So I'm just going to put a little bit more glue right where the impression is. I'll take my magnet, place it in the glue, and then I'll add a piece of washi to hold that in place. You can use a Velcro dot if you want, but now you can see and here that we have a nice magnetic closure. So when I place this in the book, I'm going to place it in just like this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add some glue to three sides of the back because we're going to create a pocket behind this pocket. So I'll just add my glue like that. I'm going to take this and put it in like this, getting it nice and stuck. Go along the bottom, get that nice and stuck, get that end nice and stuck. And then I'm just going to go in with my tall bone folder and make sure that I have a really good stick on this. And now we can close that. And y'all, we now have a beautiful little folder. I'm going to take a clip and put it there. And then we're going to put a clip right there to make sure that that glue catches and it holds. So now we have it like this. I'm going to go ahead and take the piece that measures five and three eighths by 11 and three quarters. And we're going to make the sweet little pocket for this side. All right, so I have my piece that measures five and three eighths by 11 and three quarters. And I changed the paper because I wanted to break up the busyness of my pattern just a little bit. So on the five and three eighths inch side, we're going to score at one quarter of an inch and at three eighths of an inch. And then on the 11 and 3 quarter inch side, we're going to score at 4 and 5 eighths and at 4 and 3 quarters. So now we're just going to take this and we have some very narrow score marks, but we need to fold and burnish those score marks. So now right here in the middle, we're going to have a very narrow tab and we're going to go into the second score mark and we cut straight out to free that tab. And then I'm just going to take some glue and on the long skinny flap here, I'm just going to take that glue and fold that in. You can remove it if you want. I just decided I would leave it this time. I removed it the first time but you can leave it as well. So then I'm going to take my scissors and I am just going to cut off a little bit to give myself an angle. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this little flap here because we really don't need it. And so I'm going to take my glue, add my glue on this little back flap here like that. We'll take this and we just put it down like this. Again, I'm going to bring in my long bone folder so that I can go in 
and work that stick. So we can take this and we can put it in like this. So one thing that I did notice, and it's a little mistake, but not one that can't be overcome. So what I noticed, y'all, is I have a little small mistake and it's not a deal breaker, but when I put my book in, this side is going to be open and I don't want it to be open. I wanted the opening to be on this side. Now, is this a deal breaker? It absolutely is not because I am just going to create a fix. So I'm going to take this piece, cut it off at three and a half, so I have a piece that is three and a half by one. So we're going to go ahead and put it down and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this. So I'm going to take my glue and put it down. So if you happen to do the same thing, um, this should help you fix it. So I'm going to take this and I'm moving it as close to the bottom as I can. So then I'm going to take my notebook and put it on the inside like that. Now the notebook can very easily slide. To keep my notebook from sliding out, y'all, I have a piece that measures three and a half by one. And I am just going to put down a little holder here. So this will be my workaround to stopping it from falling out. So I'm making sure that I don't have any glue on the edge here, but I'm going to put that there. Then I'll take this and I'll just wrap it around the back. But before I do, I'm just going to go ahead and just notch that a little bit like that. And we'll take our glue, put our glue right there, and then we can just fold it over. So I really could have let that stress me, but I won't. Because now I just look at this as a decorative element that I can attach something to if I want to. So now we have a nice little notebook folio. We can remove the notepad. We have this nice accordion pocket in which we can put all types of goodies. And so now I'm just going to add a couple of pieces of decorative ephemera. And I think I'm going to take this one, add some glue, and we're just going to place it right there. I actually could have made that a pocket, but I didn't. Then I'm going to take some glue and I'm going to place this right here. And it says some see a weed, others see flowers. I haven't decided what I want to do to the front of these, but I think that they are just so doggone cute. And you can see now what I mean about the pocket opening this way versus this way but either way we have a workaround so if you happen to do what I did go ahead and just put a little workaround piece in to hold that notebook in place but y'all I think that these are just so stinking cute and I probably will go back and add something to the outside I just don't know yet nothing is hitting me just yet but it just might come to me later so I hope that you have enjoyed this super awesome super cute super functional way to take notes, store notes, store receipts, store important papers all in one place. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.